Good afternoon, everybody. This is Dennis Wilborn with the Active Trend Traders. Uh, today, I'm joined with uh, David Grandy about all about trends, and uh, we want to talk market stock talk for April 4th, 2014. I want to remind everybody that everything that we talk about today is for training purposes only. Uh, we are making no recommendations on what to buy, what to sell, uh, and then that if uh, anything you do see. Um, or if you have a strategy you like, please paper trade that first uh, before you uh, risk any personal capital. How are you doing today, Dave? I'm doing good. Uh, it's a crazy day, but I'm doing good. Awesome. Did you like the the market the way it was kind of like it was kind of like a it was a a, a, a meat uh, grinder this week? Uh, it was yeah, it was a roller coaster week. That's for sure. Yeah, it was, and uh, I know that, you know, I visited your website, and I really love the website, uh, especially where the folks send you emails, and I know you like getting emails from people who are saying, hey, you know, what you're providing us is really working for us, mm -hmm. and and about 50 minutes before the end of market day, I got this email from a guy that I just, you know, it really it, it, it really touched my heart. Because it kind of answers the question for both David and I, I believe, of why we do what we do. And uh, this is a young man I've been working with for a little bit over a year on his trading. And um, he was going to be attending a meeting that we host on Saturday. But what I really love was where he says, you know, positive note, I was up 65% for 2014. I withdrew all my money, paid off my college bills for my master's degree. And uh, so he just says, thanks for all your help. And that really warms my heart when I get something like that. And so, um, and I know for Dave, uh, David, it's the same, same, you know, you love it when, when people who subscribe to your, your newsletter let you know that, hey, you know, way to go. You've done a great job for us. Is that Absolutely. right? Absolutely. That's, that's what we, we do, do this for is to help people be successful in life. And, you know, we talk a lot about, you, can, you know, it's one thing to just trade, but it's another thing and more effective to trade with a purpose. You know, what are you going to do with the proceeds from your, uh, from your trading? You know, you're going to use it to pay off bills. You're going to use it to travel like you do, Dennis. I mean, you got to have a purpose behind it, and which makes it more effective and, and more personal. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we get we get letters from members all the time that are you know related, and they tell us what they're doing with the funds, and and uh, it's a thing that keeps us going for sure. So, um, and one thing I like about you know all about trends, your website and some of the processes systems that you use, and of course the active trend trading system is that one. Uh, we both have the elements of what all great and good trading systems have, and that basically we, we identify what to trade, where to enter, where to exit, and to some extent what strategy to use, and those are the elements that make up a great trading system. Um, and it takes a while to develop that, and so fortunately uh, I know that uh, uh, having a system that works consistently is very important for both of us. So, Dave, let's take a look at this crazy market, okay? Let's do it. Okay, folks. Today, what what I have, what I've uh, put up is a um, a um, excuse me. I just had just a complete gas to the brain. Um, is a is a um, chart of the NASDAQ because the NASDAQ really got whacked today. I mean, uh, at the close, it was down over 2.5% for the day. And, and as we can see, as we talked about the NASDAQ and all the indices last week, we, we, were, into, we were over here last week, right here. And we talked about, well, if we could get a bounce here. And sure enough, we did get a bounce up there Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and then all of a sudden we got this huge turnover where we started dropping down out of the sky, and today was a significant sell-off. Today was one of those days where you just go, ouch. And if you are a trader to the long side, today I hope you had your, short, your, your uh, stops very, very tight. 
Um, so the NASDAQ, what I've got here on the left-hand side is a daily chart, and on the right side, a weekly chart. And the NASDAQ has started showing its weak, weakness back about four weeks ago as we start getting what is close to a bearish engulfing pattern. And then continue to tick down. We start breaking through some, this is the eight period moving average on the weekly, which approximates the 50 day moving average on a daily chart. And continue to sell off. We get this big, you know, you know a sig pretty significant move up. But where does it move up to? right to its past weekly highs. Past weekly high and then stops dead in the water. Uh, the S&P, on the other hand, was a little bit more tame, it appeared to be, because it did press up, hit a new high uh, for this trading, you know, for this trading for this new high for the year. But as we look at it, today's sell-off for the NASDAQ was down 1.2%. So those of you who are IBD followers will find out whether or not the market, the uptrend went back under pressure or uh, because of the action of the NASDAQ was actually is graded back to uh, being um, uh, that the market is in correction again. We will see. Uh, it too has bounced back down. It is sitting, uh, this is s and it's setting you know, right at the 20-day moving average, it is still a long way from the 50. So the S&P is acting much stronger than the um, uh, the Nasdaq or the Russell. The Russell got whacked a day uh, a little bit over 2.3 percent. In uh, it's been kind of a classic, uh, it, it not kind of. It is a classic. Um, Technical analysis failure at this point where you get this one move down, move back up to a lower high, lower low, and then a bounce back up to another lower high. And we still haven't undercut this level here, but isn't it interesting the Russell came to rest right on this, this uptrending channel and the 100-day moving average. What will next week bring? We don't know, but I will point out here, if I may, I want to point out one thing, and that's that uh, if we break through this level here, or this level, which is uh, uh, we could, and we get a close below the 100 day, it increases the uh, probability that we will revisit the 200-day moving average. And if someone were to just draw in a real quick trend line from here, I got a new toy. It's, it's a uh, drawing tool that goes into a straight line after I draw it. And I like that. And you've got this, sometimes it does. Uh, we've got this line down here, and it may, uh, if it just continues to operate with that and push on down, we could see a convergence of the 200-day moving average and uh, the price action somewhere about the 1120 or 1115 level on the Russell. So as we see, pretty significant sell-off today. Um, what's the plan for next week? It, it's I'm going to wait and see. I am basically all in cash. I did do so a couple of trades with TNA to the downside, MasterCard last week to the downside. But right now, I'm just standing by because uh, it, it's really where I'm in no man's land right now with no trade to, to make. So with that, David, tell us about all the things we can go long on next week. And I'm going <laughs> to switch over and make you the presenter, buddy. Okay, you got it. It's okay. Good. Yeah, you kind of took the words out of my mouth a little bit. I mean, um, right now cash is king. I'm just going through the highlights here. The NASDAQ, NASDAQ, after looking really good earlier in the week, got back to its old tricks yesterday and followed through with vengeance today. So it's back to leaving the market down. Um, and as I'll show in a minute, we had our first consecutive two-week close below the 50-day moving average. For those of you that are more long-term investors, that's a decent change in trend. We've always had 
um, whenever we had a, a week down, we were always popped back above the 50 day the next week. Um, not so this week. Uh, orderly pullbacks above support, we had a few of those. I actually had you know six or seven of them that were really looking really nice last week, but uh, those are no no more. And short sales patterns, we've got some, but they're still in the process of setting up. And then those that that have completed, they're really really sloppy. Um, so like Dennis said, cash is king right now. There's just I mean the fastest way. Uh, the best way to lose money in the stock market is to trade for trading's sake. You know, you've got to do the trade. Um, right now, it's a great time to just sit back, relax, let the patterns come to you. The best time to re-enter the market is when there's an abundance of really tight quality patterns, and we're just not seeing that right now on either side of the market. So let me just go through. Um, I was talking about the um, the consecutive weeks here. If you'll notice this entire run here, you know, we came down, popped back up. Came down, popped back up. Came down, popped back up. This time we came down and we stayed down. So um, you know what that means long term, um, we don't know, but um, it's definitely a change in trend worth noting. Um, we talked last week about pullback off highs patterns. The only pattern you need to know in an uptrending market. We're looking for stocks and confirmed uptrends above the 50-day moving average. Low orderly volume pullbacks. We had some of those. The Zulily had a nice setup as of last week, and it triggered, um, made a nice move on Monday, but straight down ever since. So um, not really the, the best pattern we're looking for now. Under Armour, same thing, nice tight pattern, well above support, and today got blown up. Um, so not a whole lot of stuff going on on the long side right now, and that's you know, there's times where there's time to be long, there's times where it's time to be short, and there's times where it's time to be cash. And right now, cash is, is the, the winner. Downtrends, uh, so you, if you want to go short the market, we're looking for pullback off lows. These are stocks that are exactly opposite of pullback off highs. They've already broken down, and they've pulled back um, off of their lows up to an area of resistance, and then, and then they end up breaking down again. We talked last week about MasterCard. You know, here we have a stock that was in a confirmed uptrend, broke down, pulled back off of its lows towards uh, resistance at the 50-day moving average, and then it broke down last week and, and continued this week. Um, so why aren't we going short on the market right now? Well, because for a couple reasons, the NASDAQ still is near support of three different areas. We've got a Fibonacci level. We have uh, a lateral level, and then we have a, a green uptrend level. So it's, we could easily see a little short co covering rally here. So it's hard to justify going short, particularly when the Nasdaq's fallen, what, 150 points in two days. Um, so we have to be careful about that. Uh, and the S&P is in still decent shape. It hit a new high today. Um, so, it, and it's still above the 50-day moving average. So it's not exactly... Um, you know, we're not exactly getting the green line on going short. And the other big thing is we're not seeing a whole lot of short sell patterns that have completed themselves or those that have are sloppy. Here's price line, really sloppy, um, broke down, came back to the 50-day uh, moving average, broke and then broke down again today. But there's, a, there's huge swings in here. It's not really that tight or orderly. Um, Biogen never really completed the pattern. We would like to have seen it go closer to the 50-day moving average and find resistance there um, before uh, we do our short sell. SOXP actually looks pretty good. Um, I mean, it's, but it's still it's pretty loose, but it's not as bad as, as the rest. Some pretty big swings here. So this one, you know, if we can tighten up a little bit in here, uh, you know, is a possible short sell for us. Um, other than that, there's just not a whole lot out there for me to show you um, this time. So what do we do when we have markets like that? We just wait. You know, let the patterns set up. Like I said, the, the, um, the best time to get back in the market is when you have just a strong abundance of, of quality setups. We don't have that right now. So it's a time to review your past trades, build your watch list, go do something else, go take a look at some projects you've been trying to get to or 
spend time with the wife and kids. I don't know. It's just a great time to to rest, recharge the batteries, and and uh, you know the beauty about the stock market is it it brings you in automatically and it takes you out automatically. And for those of us that trade what we see and not think here or fear, we just you know, we get in when the market tells us to, and we get out when it tells us to, and and uh, at some point soon, uh, the market will give us the green light to get back in, either on the long side or the short side, and we look forward to that. Hey, thanks, Dave. You know what I um, I love it when you talked about the aspect of that one stock that was coming up. It was wedging up towards the 50-day moving average, but didn't get there. And I don't know if that just portrays the underlying weakness that is in the uh, the actual market right now mm -hmm. but I, I know I want to show a couple of items one is is I while you were talking I went ahead and threw up a Fibonacci on the um, NASDAQ that points exactly where it's sitting right at the uh, Okay, the 60, you know, 61 percent uh, retracement level, and actually it bounced a little bit off of that today. If that fails, we've got the uptrending uh, channel, and uh, but we could see a re complete retracement. Uh, we talked last at last week. One of the things we said in kind of the closing comments, if I remember correctly, was that for the last two plus years, all the corrections have been short and shallow, and while the, the bear bull market had been in place for five years, it, sh, it sh, you know could be running out of gas, and we're looking for something different to happen. Perhaps what we saw this week, this meat grinder, where you know a person could have got into on this bounce off the hundred and ridden and gotten a really nice return over a two or three four day period, but then immediately if if you had a longer term perspective you were in the meat grinder and you got tossed out for a you know break even or a potential loss yeah i mean last week the what we were talking about was hey what's the problem you know we've been here before and we showed the the long term chart of the nasdaq and the red circles where it uh, hit the overall long term trend line yep. you know hey we've been here before we've still got quality setups and then, you know, as of through Wednesday, it was, everything was looking really great. It looked like another, just yet another time to, you know, to buy the dips. Um, and then, you know, obviously things turned for the worse Thursday. And so, um, and for, so you know, I kind of like trading to the downside with puts and occasionally going short. So, so when I like, when I see a sell off like this, I, I kind of get excited hoping that it'll purge some of the, uh, maybe a little bit of over exuberance in the market out. One of the things I found quite interesting on the IBD 50, and I've got that list and I download that each uh, week, only four out of the 50 were up for the day. And uh, so it's right in line with the market. And then I also do a running list of um, all the stocks that have been on the, the IBD 50 list for the complete year. And there's approximately 108 of those right now. And uh, the way I have this sorted, up at the top here, only uh, I think it's 10 of the stocks of that 108 you know, stock list were actually in positive figures today. And the one that got hit the worst was our old buddy Priceline, as you were indicating. Uh, I want to just highlight one chart before we uh, move on to answering any questions, David, and yeah, that's and, the. And let me add one more thing too. Yeah. On the IBD 50, if if this is going to be a more prolonged um, correction, whether we go sideways or, or downward, the IBD 50 list is probably going to end up being one of the best short sell lists out yep. there because you've got a lot of names on there that are really extended that have had made big, that have made big runs and are have all broken down now, or not all of them, but most of them have. And it's just a matter of time for them to complete their patterns. And if they do that, it's going to be, it's going to be great. And then while the correction is going on, there's going to be new names that are going to set up, and they're going to set up early stage bases, and they'll, they'll break out and when the market gets healthy again, and you'll see those start to emerge, uh, replacing the beaten down ones on the IBD 50. 
you know, and I agree on that wholeheartedly. And I, I think I discovered that, and you, and you guys discovered it also several years ago, that those growth stocks, they go up sometimes like rocket ships, and they go, and oftentimes when it's time for the sell-off, they fall out of the sky even faster than they went up. And that's one of the things of technical analysis. Typically, it takes about uh, a third of the time to go down as as the tooth, you know, of, as the time it went to, you know, move up. And Harlan mentions that the last cycle's leaders, next cycle's last cycle's leaders become next cycle's laggards. I wanted to exactly. highlight. This is the number one stock that was on the uh, 50 list from last week which is Qhu, the uh, uh, technology company. And it did a really classic, and I want to just point this out to everybody really quickly. We, when we had a nice rebound, stochastics come out of the bottom. We got a, uh, a high wave uh, spinning top last Friday, and then it proceeds to continue up. But look at the, the long wicks on these candles. It showed that sellers were coming in, even though there was a pressure to go up. And then Wednesday, when we get this candle right here, uh, there was a sell point just as it broke down and engulfed the uh, um, Tuesday's high. That bearish engulfing um, pattern foretold of, foretold of what was happening next. And now we've got a close back below the 100-day the moving average, which could tell us that there increases the probability that um, QIHU may visit the 200-day moving average before attempting another rally. So this is a pretty classic uh, move, and I just wanted the people to see that um, this this wedge up on slightly above average volume, and then bam, it it falls back over and falls like a rock over the last two days and stops right where you expected, right where there was former support. So, David, you got any other charts? Uh, so you're gonna. So I heard you correctly. You're gonna take some time off next week and just go to the beach, right? <laughs> yeah, well, it's supposed to be in the mid 80s here next week, so maybe I will do that. Okay. I mean, it, no, but seriously, this is a this is a time to um, you know take a look at your past trades and and what you did right, what you did wrong, and uh, take some time to recharge the batteries, and because there's gonna be there's gonna be a great buy or short sell opportunity coming soon and um, we want to make sure we're ready.